Good morning, good morning, good morning. How are you this lovely morning? Oh, it is a lovely morning as well. The radio is going to come on. I can't just stand by. I'll see if I can mute it. Now, you never guess what this is. Ha 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 ha! Of oh, their revenues. Comes. It's a very small amount. It could be. That's my Nexus 5, which means I'm not filming with the Nexus 5. And I'm obviously not filming with the 360 degree camera, am I? Because I'm the hook for that is in the other car. So <clears throat> let me get my morning cough out of the way, Alan. <coughs> there we are. So, no, so I've got my hands on an iPhone 6, which is there's lots of iPhone 6s going around at the moment because everyone's upgrading to an iPhone 8 aren't they so if you want an iPhone 6 now's your chance and you can pick them up for about 200 quid and if the person who's you know had them has been looking after them they're they're fantastic you know they're every bit as good as the Nexus 5 I would say but um, anyway the main thing is that uh, I am going to experiment with using this as a camera and I've got to say my old iPhone which I think my, my last iPhone was an iPhone 4 and I only had an iPhone because the Android weren't good enough at that point really to even be called a phone. So the iPhone was sort of head and shoulders ahead of every, above or ahead of everyone else. When the iPhone 4 came out, Nexus was really like very uh, early days. And um, so now I still uh, like the old Android um, and I'm not gonna use this as my main phone, but I've got to say the media uh, sort of facilities on the old iPhone, the video and the cameras, uh, the video and the microphone were second to none. And in fact, a lot of the early DFO DPA podcasts were recorded on an iPhone. And we had some professional sound gear. <clears throat> had a professional microphone and a Marantz professional recorder. And uh, uh, in the end, I just didn't bother lugging it around because it was literally so... Uh, it was so... Uh, bulky and and there was no point you know it's so pointless uh, used to do everything on an iPhone the only problem with doing uh, interviewing on an iPhone is that if you turn up and say oh, I'm a reporter for such and such you know can you tell me about your product and what's in it and why is it so much better than everyone else they just don't take you seriously because they don't you know they don't take a reporter with an iPhone seriously Whereas if you turn up with a camera crew, like a bloke with a sound boom and a mic with a dead cat on it and a, uh, you know, a massive great video camera that a bloke has to heft up onto his shoulder, they're like, oh yeah, 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 I'm going to be on the telly, what do you want to know? And the answer is <clears throat> nothing more really or less than anyone with a 4K iPhone would want to know and probably, uh, you know, could get <clears throat> a far <clears throat> more interviews done without having to carry a massive great load of equipment around with it. anyway anyway we're going to try the iPhone let me know what you think if it's better then fine if not it'll, this one will do 4k videos the 6 was the last one that had the headphone socket which is why I, I love it I've decided to go for the well I mean I had no choice really I had an offer of 6 and now I've got it so cost me a couple of hundred quid and which is cheaper than a, the alternative which is a GoPro or something which would probably be more than I need and, and it's absolutely lousy at making phone calls from what I hear. So we had a bit of movement yesterday on the uh, on the cat on the uh, Serec side. I went around to see this Serec machine at nine o'clock yesterday morning. Apparently it's absolutely state of the art. This is, I mean, I, I don't wish to be critical of the community dental service because they are, they have taken some very difficult problems off of me and I love them for that and the, why why can they take those sort of problems off me because the sky's the limit as far as their resources go they are you know i mean this was the reason why all the kids were referred to the community dental service because they took time and in general practice what you don't have the luxury of is time because time is money and you don't have the luxury of just uh, spending a lot of money on people that aren't bringing any money in uh, which goes back to basic rule number one with dentistry. It doesn't matter how much good you're trying to do, you have to stay within budget. And if you start treating a load of kids, you're not gonna stay within budget because the parents are not gonna be paying you the 150, 100, 
90 pounds an hour or whatever that you need to get paid to uh, just to and this is because everybody's in your chair ties up all the resources they tie up all the receptionists the staff they tie up the hardware the uh, the, the premises, the uh, all your leases carry on ticking away. Your OPGs still ticking away. Even even if you've got someone in the chair who's paying a penny. So they can't. They're not cost-effective children. But then you know do, we shouldn't really insist that they are. Um, we shouldn't really necessarily insist that they're. Should should we insist that their parents ensure that they're cost-effective? I don't know. Anyway, that's that's beside the point. The point was that the community dental service, where it really had, they worked. The idea was that they worked on a salaried basis. So, in other words, in the days when we worked on a piecework and we had, we were paid for filling, they were paid per hour. Now, when you're paid per hour, you've got a that's a very big luxury. You know, I don't even think my staff realise what a luxury it is to get paid per hour. So getting paid per hour means it doesn't matter what you do. In fact, most people spend most of their working careers trying to get out of doing anything in the hours that they're paid but in the community dental service it did mean that they could see a lot of patients who needed a lot of time but didn't bring in any money so they were well resourced and we loved them for that although we we thought that it was uh, you know it's a bad model but for a few patients severely disadvantaged patients it's the only model so but to give you an idea of um, what how they how they're currently spending their money. They bought they bought a Ceric machine, and this Ceric machine is uh, it retails for fifty nine thousand plus VAT. But the, did they pay fifty nine thousand plus VAT for it? No, they paid eighty nine thousand plus VAT for it because it's not their money. Like it's not their money. It's my money. It's our money. It's your money. It's tax dollars at work. So, it, but basically, they don't care. It's not their money. It's their budget. They've been given it to play with. <laughs> So, <laughs> play, play pretend businesses. So, anyway, they, oh, I know, junction of death, I'm going to take it. Yeah, 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 I'm okay. I'll live another day. So, why did they pay 89? Well, they were told that all the servicing was going to get chucked in free of charge. And um, so they wanted, a, they wanted like a one-off item, line item, I think that they could put down as a capital expense because a, a, a CEREC being a computer, or technically a computer, can be written off in the first year. If you write it down as computer equipment, then you can write it off in the first year. So, <clears throat> so, this bird keeping pace with me. I'm doing 50 miles an hour. That's bloody impressive. It's doing about 45. Right, so, uh, anyway, you've got ongoing costs with this CEREC machine. You've got 100 and something, 170 pounds a month uh, maintenance, software, leasing costs, okay? So, so you're not gonna use this thing without leasing the software, and that's 176 pounds a month. Then, and that, but that includes software updates, which it bloody well should do for that sort of, you know, 12, 12, 200, over two grand a year. Then, You've got servicing costs, and for some p weird reason, servicing does not depend on um, the number of units you make. Apparently, the servicing is every year you have it serviced, uh, whether you've made one unit or no units or a million units. So, also, it came with a three year guarantee, so really, they would have been you know, there's no cost. So anyway, they've got this total TCO, total, total cost of ownership of 89,000 plus VAT, which they wrote down year one. Then they used it for precisely 52 minutes in two and a half years, which I would imagine is probably two crowns, three crowns tops. So, they then decide it's coming up to the end of its warranty period or its guarantee period, or it's coming to the point where most, and anyone who bought it with a commercial brain would be thinking about possibly trading it in, upgrading it or whatever, so they, they basically after two and a half years they decide this thing's sitting in the store cupboard, everyone's had a chance to use it, nobody's really interested and so uh, they want to sell it. Now, they want £49,000 for this, 
despite the fact that they are £59,000 plus fat new. So they're like every every bad decision taker, every bad <laughs> gambler, every failed businessman. They've made the wrong decision and they now want to get, they think they can get themselves out of it and buy it. But uh, we bought this thing and we paid 89, but then that did include all the servicing. So although we, we overpaid probably for the servicing, but anyway, let's say that it's 59. Uh, and but, but it's, we've never used it. So what would we like to get back for it? 59 never used, I don't know, 49? <laughs> 49, why? Because it's a CYA maneuver, isn't it? They want to cover their asses. They want to, they want to say, yeah, we, we've been, made a mistake with this machine, but we didn't take too much of a loss on it because it was serviced. You know, we got all the servicing free. Ne never, these guys from ceramic whatever who sold them this machine, they must have thought they died and gone to heaven when they sold this machine to the CDS. Because I, I'm not kidding, I haven't told you the best bit yet. They didn't just buy one, they bought two. <laughs> they bought two. And the other one is, as far as I know, was never used either. Because why would one, if they didn't use one, why would they use the other one? Do you know what I mean? It's not like they had one too many. They just, somebody who didn't know what was required, who knew nothing about the staff on the ground and their requirements and their level of desire for a Serec machine, just thought it would be nice for the CDS to have a Serec machine or two. And so they paid 89,090 plus another 20%, so it's 108, 108,000. 216,000, nearly a quarter of a million pounds on two Serec machines that have been used for precisely 52 minutes in, a, in two and a half years that they now want to sell. So one of them, I told them I would, you know, I'm seriously considering buying one of them, which I am. And because I don't want to buy two of them, then they've sent the other one off to an auction site called something or other, I don't know what it's called, dental. Dental Stock Exchange, I think, in Dental Stock Exchange. So, although I don't think it's on the site now. It might be on today. It wasn't there yesterday. So, Dental Stock Exchange. So, so and the other one, they've hung on for me to come over and have a look. And, <clears throat> you know, and uh, anyway, uh, I came and had a look. And it, it does look be, it's a, it's a top of the range machine. I've got to tell you, it's the extra large. It's the, you know, the uh, double whopper with cheese of Serec machines. However, it's, um, you know it's it's such a large machine it's probably I had a quick look and then and then again this is the importance of keeping good accounts and doing management accounts because I, I was able to come back and say to my receptionist look I need a quick and dirty estimate of how many crowns we do a year and uh, how many and what what our lab bill is for crowns you know I need to know the cost per crown oh dear we're gonna be a while because we're at a junction and this is the junction that they're resurfacing and no doubt they've found the problem and they've decided to carry on resurfacing it for a bit because it's the public sector and nobody ever got more money for finishing quickly and doing a brilliant job in the public sector when you can drag it out and do an average one. So, yeah, so I've offered them 15 grand for it. And you know, and, th and then you might say, "Well, angry, they want 49. How, how are they going to accept 15?" And this is where the old Trump, the old Donald, the art of the dental deal is coming out here, right? Okay. Do you remember what I said about desperation? As soon as they realise that you want it, they're not going to sell it to you. They're going to, you know, this is where people go wrong in markets. I mean, we're walking along in a market, and my wife will pick up a leather purse, and she's like, "Oh, not that's nice, isn't it?" You know, you know, oh, how much is that then? And the tenor, oh, five pounds, oh, all right then. So, I'll say to a lot, if you, if, you, if you see something you like, especially if it's a bit expensive, I said, don't just stand there for five minutes going, how oh, lovely it is. I said, just pick it up, just go like that to me and then put it down again, throw it down, throw it down, like it's not worth much. And then I'll just, and, and then just wander off. And I shall say, look, and I'll, I'd like to buy this for my wife as a surprise present. But what's your best price on it? No, not, oh my, oh lovely, isn't it lovely? Would you buy this for me, dear? Oh, it's so lovely. I don't care what it costs. She doesn't talk like that. 
Oh, so, anyway, so so you're thinking, right? It's a game of chess. You're thinking, what are they thinking? And then more than that, it's game theory. Because you're thinking, what are they thinking that you're thinking? And they're thinking, what are you thinking that they're thinking? Well, they probably aren't, actually. But um, they've got this thing that's been written down in their books anyway. So as far as they're concerned, they've had the tax relief on it. So I don't know why they expect anything, to be honest. But um, but they do. And, uh, and they've got inflated inflated expectations haven't they because they are not business people and they don't know you know you go into the average surgery and and two people will look what like the the young the younger person will look at the surgery and think and think oh how much this cost to buy it oh, I bet this cost about hundred and fifty thousand pound to equip and then and then um, you know the older experienced practitioner will go into the same surgery and have a look around and say I wonder how much it would cost to take all this down the dump because uh, you know you can always buy new stuff. It's not that's not a problem. And I can buy a new machine for fifty nine plus VAT, and it will come with a three year guarantee, a brand new PC, uh, uh, spares certainly not full servicing, but spares and um, installation and training. So none of which they're going to give me. I mean the thing is just about out of warranty. It's not. It's not. I mean, okay, it's great. It's too big anyway, as I say. It's like, it's the sort of machine that would, you know, and they even said this to me. <laughs> he says, this is, this is top of the range machine, he says, Mr. Watson. This is, uh, this is uh, sort of, um, a sort of thing that you might find in a dental lab. And I said, yeah, I said that I agree with you completely. So <laughs> I turned it back on him and I said, yeah, that's right. That's right, it's probably actually not any good for me because <laughs> I'm just we're just like a private practice I said like don't get me wrong I'd love to have this but <clears throat> if I had something like this I said <clears throat> it would need to be busy all day every day I, I wouldn't be able to have it <laughs> like you <laughs> sitting in a store cupboard for two and a half years while I paid 180 pounds plus VAT a month for the software license and and uh, five you know and, and it had it serviced every year by by this incredulous ceramic people who can't believe that they've they've got nearly quarter of a million quid in their in their uh, pocket and uh, and the, and that for a service that people who bought the machine are not even using it you know they just bought it as a souvenir it's just like a prestige project you know that uh, no, we've got one like like North Korea, you know, or China, all their empty cities. We've got this. You know, we've got two ceramic machines. Did you know we've got two ceramic machines? No. Yeah, here they are. Wait a minute, they're underneath these cardboard boxes somewhere. Hang on. <laughs> so what? So fifteen grand. Okay, so I get it for fifteen grand. I'll be happy. To be honest, I think if they get rid of it for fifteen grand, they should be happy because it's you know the the, the alternative is to pack it all up send it off to an auction site and then hope that someone is going to pay them more than 15 grand which is i mean quite possibly they will you know quite possibly they will i think to pick up a nearly new but you'd have to trust them when they say it's nearly new i believe them because i've been and seen it in the cupboard so i, I actually I, and they're honest people but when you're on an auction site typically auction sites have for shifted stuff that's slightly dodgy you, you know they uh, they might you know you might if you had a steric machine that someone had dropped really badly and and no longer cut square uh, that's you'd shift it on an auction site you know what I mean so there's a, there's a lot of risk associated with buying stuff on auction sites so anyway but you know good luck to them if they think they can get more than 15 grand then that's fine if they want 15 grand by Friday in cash then they can come and see me so Oh dear. So and then, what am I going to do with it? I mean, th that's the other thing. The Ceric machines are not all that, you know. I mean, I know they were heralded as the answer to the dentist's dream in that he could sort of do away with the crown and bridge technician. But in fact, they're they're very much not that, you know. They are, from what I can work out from talking to dentists, have got these things that a lot of a lot of a lot of them buy them and then they use them for a bit and then they stick them in the corner and don't use them and uh, and that's because from the cosmetic point of view they're not all not all that brilliant you know your your technician is going to be able to make a crown which looks far better than a, a crown that's just sintered become the cut out of a sintered block 
even if you use the graduated blocks and try and get a gradiated colour. You do need to do some sort of staining afterwards to try and, uh, and light cure it all, to try and uh, make it look a little, you know, characterise it a bit. So by the time you've, you know, you're, by the time you're cutting the crowns and uh, making them on the steric machine and then spending time either in the furnace or under the, in the light box for, for staining them all up, then you are a technician. You're doing the technicians, you know, you might as well hire a technician, do you know what I mean? Because uh, the blocks are 20 quid each. And the uh, and then you've got your you've got your monthly hire and servicing and everything and the cost of drills, I suppose, on top of that. So it's a, it, you know, they're not all they're not <clears throat> as sought after as they used to be, Serek. <clears throat> now it's all it's moved on a bit. We've got cast glass restorations, and uh, you're, you know, I mean, would you want to do an anterior crown in a Seric? You certainly couldn't do, I mean, that would have to go to a technician. I mean, can you can't do a post and core in a Seric? Um, you can't, so you're going to have to come to some sort of in surgery arrangement for your, you know, uh, cementing in um, uh, titanium posts or something, building up your own cores in a core material, so that's going to take more time. And then your, so you've got, so you need a technician to do your aesthetically, um, your aesthetically sensitive crowns, and possibly quite a few of your post crowns, and your gold crowns. <laughs> And, and your multi-unit bridges that won't fit in the Seric machine. And you have to have Seric blocks for every single type of every single colour of tooth because you can't, it's, like, it's only like composite, you have to keep all the colours, you can't otherwise you'll get someone in and you'll say no. Uh, <laughs> you know, have you got a B1? Uh, no Mr. Watchman, I've got a C4. Oh, all right, that'll do. <laughs> <laughs> have you got a B1 block? No, I've got a C4 block. All right, I'll stick it in. We've got a load of C4 blocks. <laughs> we have to get rid of them. It's a bit more obvious, isn't it? Eh? It's a bit more obvious. If you're trying it, if you have C4 composites going out of date and you want to get rid of it, you can usually you can. But if your C4 porcelain blocks are going out of date, then and you want to use them up, what are you going to do? So well, who's it going to work for? Well, it's going to work really well for someone who wants a white crown on the back tooth <laughs> by which i mean lower four backwards upper seven backwards who's not at all cosmetically sensitive uh po possibly partly blind uh, ideally and uh and uh wants it done quickly because you're you know and, and there, it has some advantages as well of course i mean you get the patient in you cut the prep you, you scan the tooth, but you then got the design phase, and uh, but the patient can wait or even watch you design it, and then um, they can then watch the uh, the crown being milled, which is a fantastic uh, sales thing. So from from sales and marketing, I'm sure it's great. And then the crown pops out the slot like a, like a gobstopper, like a like bubble gum out of a fairground dispensing machine and um, you tell them to go and sit back in the chair and you'll get it stuck on. <clears throat> but, um, and they're, they're still numb. So I mean, you know, and that's it, one and done. Thanks, 540, 600 quid, whatever you're gonna charge for it. But it's gonna be pretty, uh, cosmetically, you know, I mean, if someone came in and said they wanted, I don't know, 12 veneers done or something, then that might be the ideal thing, mightn't it? Because that'll probably pay for the machine because you're you're going to uh, you're going to want 12 crowns uh, veneers, and they're all going to want to be really, really white, and they are going to be, um, you know, uh, and and you need to have them all matched. Anyway, that's all the thoughts I have on Seric machines and how to negotiate. And, and and how not to run a CDS with your taxpayers' money? Can't believe it. 
you only find out about these things because you you sort of you, at the fringe you know you, you sort of in, interact with CDS or any government agency at the fringe and you may be privileged to get a sort of a little insight into their world and how they work all the time sad all right talk to you tomorrow bye